What's up everyone, Ian here. I'm gonna go ahead and take you through what I would like to say is the absolute best chest stretch. Now, um, what's really funny is a lot of people are already kind of doing this, and then when you meet them and you start working with them, it's kind of like, hey, you know, I wanna show you this chest stretch. I do this one all the time, great. I was hoping that you'd already be good at it. Two minutes later, things are going downhill for them way harder than they thought. So what we're gonna do is kind of end up implementing pails and rails at different angles to expand range of motion and really condition the tissue all across the front side of the body. What I'm also going to do is show you different angles that are really, really great that are going to be able to kind of hit different lines of tension. So that way you as the viewer are able to kind of make this a more of an individual experience, finding out where your most specific lines of tension are, where you feel limited. So let's start off really simple by just saying it's pretty important that things are even. Are they gonna be perfect? Truth of the story is probably not. But if you have a huge discrepancy, we definitely don't want that. Same idea with lining yourself up. Right now there's a mirror in front of me so I can kind of see that I'm lined up. I'll just keep this relatively um, easy, but I could eventually walk all the way back into here and that would be a good spot to also hit. So let's keep this more to where we would think most people might be. So as I'm here, what I don't want to have happen is just to be using everything else to get there. So if I'm trying to avoid the stretch, that's what's gonna happen. So even posteriorly tilting, flexing, keeping my bottom half locked in, and then maybe extending the spine might be the best way to really set someone up. Now I should feel the stretch all through the front. So anywhere along my chest, my bicep, any of this line is perfectly fair game. I can also think about incorporating a little bit of wrist. So maybe just flossing, maybe just doing a little bit of this, right? So I can get some rotation in there. I could also really emphasize external rotation, which would be smart if I'm trying to stretch my chest, right? So I can come all the way to here, make sure the line's completely taut. Now I'm getting a huge stretch through my chest. So from here, let's start off with it a little bit more linear. I'm just gonna think shoulder adduction as if I'm doing a chest fly. So I'm trying to bring my hands together in front of me and that's my pales contraction. What I don't wanna do is contract my biceps. I wanna to try to keep the arms straight and think about contracting my chest in the front of the shoulder. Once I do that, that's my pales 10 to 20 seconds. Rails is going to be to try to lift back and straighten out the arms, really opening the chest up, actively squeezing my shoulder blades together and then I can take another step forward, sink in, okay? So there's option number one, the most popular. Now, is this an option? Hell yes. Is this an option? Hell yes. Any of the same exact stuff that we just did for pails and rails from anywhere along this continuum is perfectly fine. Now, Next option I really wanna go over. So what I wanna be able to do is kinda of hit the anterior capsule of the shoulder. So basically the front side of my shoulder, some of the deeper stuff that really runs into here. And I also wanna be able to get after this certain line of tension that a lot of people are really gonna need. So what I do is I go ahead and get my wrist neutral. I step all the way forward. I not only let my shoulder blade squeeze back, but I really try to lift my hands up and get this to slack, which you see they won't. That's what we're looking for. So that's my rails contraction. As I come into it, I can think about doing my pails, which is really this, trying to push down towards the ground or basically bring my shoulder from back here to forward. So I push down, there's my pails, 10 to 20 seconds. Rails is gonna to be to try to lift and squeeze shoulder blades. I'm really trying to get a lot of tricep. When you do this portion, make sure it doesn't turn out in shoulder adduction or abduction, where you actually get your hands to move away from each other. Try to keep them tight and lift up so that we're really getting that out of there. In that position, we really don't want any of this. Okay, so make sure you don't do that. Just a quick little bonus one that I wasn't gonna do for you. Let's get into it. Here's great chest angle, right? But then what else happens? We can go into the Americana, right? So I can get myself into more external rotation, hands behind the elbow. I can put it internal rotation pails, external rotation rails, trying to really get that back there without losing the abs, sink into it, hold it. It's not my favorite setup for the Americana, mostly because someone's gonna have to have some good body awareness or at least the coach there to see whether things are moving that we don't want. 
but it's a really great option, especially for lighter pails. That's one of the ones I like to use a lot. So there's a couple of different ways that you can get into really opening up your chest. We have a strength um, and conditioning routine with the cables that would follow up this really, really well. Swimmers would be great, weighted shoulder cars, anything that allows you to use the backside of your body, rowing, pulling, any of that stuff to solidify the open that we just kind of gave you in the front. Really, really good idea. One, two combo, should make sense. Hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you have any questions at all and we'll see